I will be very happy to answer questions now if I if I can. Um, I can't always. Uh, after one reading, a woman stuck up her hand and said, uh, why is it that all the mothers in your books are either useless or dead? <laughs> <laughs> that is such a good question and I have no idea what the answer is. And I was busy writing this book at the time and guess what? Another useless mother. I really have no idea why. But anyway, if I can answer your question, I will. Has anyone anything to ask? Uh, at the back? So where next? Off well, that's a very good question. This is the first book that has strayed out of Canada because um, Megan comes over here. So a third of the book is spent in this country. I, when I started to write Crow Lake, I absolutely loved it because for the first time I knew exactly what I was talking about. It wasn't that Crow Lake is the community I grew up in. It isn't. And none of the things that happened in it happened in real life. And the only person who is real in Crow Lake is my baby sister, who uh, was the template for the baby in Crow Lake. But I knew that if the events that happened in the book had happened, it would have been exactly like that. I. I know how people are there. I knew how they uh, were, I should say. I knew uh, the things that are important to them and the rules they live their life by. And I do not have the same authority when I write about England because I did not have my childhood here. So I write about Canada back to kind of roughly 1968, which is when I left. And I have written about Megan coming to this country at that time, because I did. But whether I would write a book entirely set over here, I, I don't know. Whether there is more to say about the North, I don't know. It all boils down to whether or not I get another idea, and that is always very up in the air. I've only had four ideas in 68 years, and one of them was <laughs> How do you write? How, you know, different people do it in different ways in terms of retreating away or setting times. Do you make notes? What's your kind of format for, for trying to develop things? I, I do make notes all the time. I have notebooks filled with ideas. I, there's a notebook beside my bed and I write in the dark and then can't read it in the morning. <laughs> um, but once I've got an idea, then I am very disciplined about how I approach it. I work uh, from as soon as I get up in the morning until about half past three in the afternoon, uh, at least five days a week, and um, towards the end, six days and sometimes even seven, because by the, by the end the publishers are reading down the neck and you're always at least a year behind. So it gets very, very pressured at the end. But at the beginning, because I'm so slow, and because I know that I would just never finish otherwise, I do, I'll work at it like a full-time job. And um, I can't seem to move on until I've got the bit that I'm doing right to my satisfaction. And I think the reason for that is because they are character-driven books, mine are. There's not a whole lot of plot not a lot of story. Things happen, but it isn't basically all the things. It's about how the characters react to those things. That's what I'm interested in. So as the story goes along, the characters develop. And I realize that something that I wrote a couple of chapters ago doesn't work anymore. And I have to go back and redo that. So it's a very laborious procedure. It takes me a good six years. Um, to write a book, which is a long time, but that's how it is. Yes? Um, so a lot of your characters are very intense and convoluted, and do you feel quite run out when you finish writing? <laughs> because you must get quite involved in what you're writing. Yeah, 
Yes, I was saying. And some days you must be quite shattered, I do. I do. The characters. It is very hard work, and that's it's kind of nice to have that appreciated because people think you just sit there and mm -hmm. it, doesn't, it doesn't happen like that. And I was saying to somebody earlier that um, I know these characters better than I know my kids because uh, you can't ever really know a real person in the way you know characters whom you have created. And I have to spend so long with them, and I live with them every day, because even on a Sunday they're always in the back of my mind, and what is, how they are developing is in the back of my mind. So yes, it is quite an intense procedure, but I love the writing, I love the characters, um, and they stay with me. It's been one of the great pleasures I didn't realize how nice it was to have those people kind of in the background of my mind. And uh, it has, been, when it's going well, there's nothing to touch, to touch writing. You can have the drugs, fighting is better. <laughs> when, it's, when it's not going well, mm -hmm. it is tough. I know uh, somebody asked my husband a bit after Pearl Lake came out what it was like being married to a successful writer, and he said it was a lot better than being married to an unsuccessful writer. Coming back to your characters and the creation of the characters, at what point can you actually visually see them? Here's a funny thing. The publishers, one of the publishers said, you don't ever tell us what they look like. That's what I'm asking. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what they look like because I see them from the inside. Mm -hmm. I, at first I was, I was just, I didn't know what to say to her. And then I thought, I actually don't know what they look like. I'm not all that interested. Um, what I'm interested in is who they are. And I guess, I mean, I have given things. I think at the end I say that when Megan comes, uh, sees Tom, he's um, thin and disheveled, like always. Um, I say that Adam has inherited his mother's fine hair and eyes. Somebody refers to Megan as a stunner at one stage. So I have, I kind of said, but I don't ever see them, which I know is very strange. But it's just not something that I've, that I've thought about. What about Jake, though? I see Jake. No, Jake I did describe. So just rewritten. Yes, because his appearance was very fundamental mm -hmm. to Jake. He was a very charismatic and handsome guy, and that mattered in the book. I mean, I have to say, basically, I am, I have read enough about beautiful women and beautiful men. I don't think it needs to be said anymore, and it isn't a bit of them that I terrible, really. It's the characters. But I do realize it's strange. Question. Yes. Um, a book club. Um, we, we thought that Megan's story could be continued. It needs just that could be the begin, beginning of the next book. Mm -hmm. In other words, it didn't really one, it, it didn't really finish. One you don't know. Was, yes, yes mm -hmm. one wanted to know more. I think we all did. Mm -hmm. um, that's an interesting thought. And actually, the ending with Megan, I won't give away, but I will just say that when I came up to the end, I didn't know what it was going to be, what her <coughs> decision was going to be. I just knew that it had to be hers. It, had, it couldn't be mine. I had drawn this character. Megan, despite what my sister says, is not like me. And I would not make the choice that she made, but I thought, uh, particularly in today's climate, I'm going to come in for some flack for Megan's decision, but I can't help that. This is what that character would do, so why better lump it? I spent 300 pages working on her, and this is who she is. So I knew I had to write it honestly. I agree with you that her story and Tom's story in particular 
I do not want to amend. I don't say at the end what Tom's decision is, because he doesn't know at the end. Megan does know what her choice would be. Tom does not know. And therefore, I thought it wasn't uh, right to say what he was going to do. But interestingly, 99% of the people who have read it have said that they thought they knew what he was going to do. And it is the opposite of what I think he's going to do. <laughs> so that was kind of interesting. <coughs> but yeah, Megan's story isn't over, nor is Tom's. Um, I don't know if I would go on to her more. You see, she's my contemporary, so if I, if she went on, then I'd be coming into the present day, and I don't know how I'd find that. Tom, tell. <laughs>